you, you know about overview about right to dream, so now you have to know about us, the guys that we get, you know, chosen to go to right to dream. But first of all, I just want to say a big thank you for having us here and the three of us. It's a real privilege to come from where we come from to be in front of you guys today. Yeah, it's a it's a dream come true for us. So um, I hope you like our stories. My name is Edward Opoku. I'm the oldest here, so it's up for me to go first. That's the tradition. Um, I'm a rookie at Columbus Crew, and I was drafted earlier from University of Virginia in Charlottesville. Yeah. <laughs> hey. So far, it's going pretty well. I'm getting uh, game time with the first team, and we are going to make the playoffs. I'm also already started, uh, studying to finish my college degree, which is great, because it's, it's important for me to, to get my uh, college degree and finish school whilst playing pro. I've been very privileged over the past six years while I've been in the US. The MLS, a great college, um, an amazing boarding school that I went to, and I have an amazing host family who support me in all the decisions that I make, which is the great, great, great ones. It's easy to live this life, almost in isolation to the reality. And actually, I've shared my story only once whilst I've been in the US, not even to my family. I kept it a secret, an untold story, not because I was pretending to be someone else or I was ashamed of my story, but it was because I didn't want people to feel pity for me. I didn't want people to treat me differently because of my story and how I grew up. So I ask you today, if you can find inspiration out of my story, that's great, but don't feel pity for me. I grew up in a very, very poor community in Ghana. There was a busy dirt street running through the village where all the kids will come out and play soccer. That's all we knew. No one had a soccer ball or shoes. And the ground <laughs> was hard and rocky. There was no grass. We tied together grocery bag to make a soccer ball. And we played it until it couldn't be played anymore. One day, someone from the local mining company showed up holding a soccer ball and shoes, and, and shoes. We thought, what is this? He gave us this, and this transformed our lives. It was like a kid getting his preferred Christmas presents. The community formed around. Grandparents, parents, siblings would form and watch people play the beautiful game. I grew up in many ways without any parents. My father disowned me when I was born. He said, <laughs> he said, I was too weak to be a son of his. Oh. Sorry. I was too young to know this at first as hand because he passed away when I was five years old. But I remember being told over and over and over again by family relatives. This hurt me like it is hurting me now. I'm the youngest from eight siblings from a mother. She lives extremely poor and constantly to uh, survive. I never went to school before Right to Dream because there was no money to send me to one. I just played football. I remember the day that the local coach came to see us play on the field. He said, I was six, six years old. He said, I wanted to go and see your mom with you. As a kid, I was just, I was curious. I was just concerned. What did I do? What, what happened? That day, he had been in rain. And when we get back to my house, it'd been destroyed in the rain. And there was nothing left in the area for me to sleep. A few of my things ran around, lying around in the mud. It was a miracle that the coach was coming to offer me something different. I was completely hopeless without it. But I moved into a better place. 
much better place. But for you to understand properly, <laughs> it wasn't even easy. We had a roof over on top of our heads, which was like a big improvement. <laughs> but I was one out of the 15 boys who were going to live in just one room with them. <laughs> if you got there first, you have a little piece of mat to sleep on. But if you don't, then you find yourself on the floor to sleep on. So you see, everyone is going to get early, early night sleep because you want to sleep on the mattress or the mat. <laughs> Life at home was different. No school, no rules, no discipline, and definitely no guidance. Four years later, Right to Dream came along. An opportunity did not come in my town often. This was very rare. Everyone was there. And out of the 600 kids, Coach Joe, who was the head of recruitment at Right to Dream, said he was going to pick 16. Oh, God. 616? Then he decided he was going to pick 8 out of the 16. And then to 4. And then to 1. And I'm standing in front of you guys today. He said, he took me to see my mother. And without hesitation, do you know what my mom said? Just to ask for permission, she said, no, 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 no. You don't need to ask me for permission. Take him. <laughs> and as a 10-year-old boy, you sit there and you question your, mother, your mother's commitment. <laughs> How? Why? But I now realize she had no chance, you know? It was her sacrifice and her poverty to bear. I did not like right to dream when I first arrived. I just wanted to run away, just to get out of the rules and the structured life they had there, because I wasn't used to it. I had never been to school before. I remember my first day in English class when I was asked to tell a story. I couldn't write in English. I could barely speak it. I wrote two sentences of my best attempt of the story. It was about when Rooney um, scoring a goal, and when Rooney actually played for DC United, and I played against him. So it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that I heard was, the only thing was when I wrote the word goal, I spelled it G-O-O-O-O, -O -O -O, until I hit <laughs> the end of the book. Because on TV, that's the only time I heard that that word. <laughs> my friends laughed, just like you guys. And I thought, oh my god, I did a great job. Wow. <laughs> but then four years later, I found out that they were laughing just because it was just so wrong. <laughs> my life at Right to Dream was different to others. Most kids get to go home during holidays. I couldn't. It would just have taken me to the wrong way. Drugs, guns, trouble, and my mom couldn't have, she didn't have the money to feed me if I had gone home. I only went home once when I was a right to dream. That was at the age of 13. My coach, the one who had taken me when I was six, told me I shouldn't go back. He took me away, locked me up. The only time he let me out was when I was going to training. One morning, I said to him, I'm going down to the stream to fetch water and wash my clothes. I put all my clothes in a basket. I ran away. I ran about 10 miles to my auntie's house. I was taken away quickly. One day, right to dream, sent people to come and get me. And right when they get there, my coach sent me back and said, go away. I don't want you to talk to them. So, after running away from my community, I did not look back. I did not return home until I had gone to the US when I was 17 years old. That was the first time I, I went back home to see my family. So, I made it to the US though. The boy that was too weak to be his father's son made it to the US. And standing in front of you guys today. I 
remember the day that my host family took me to the apartment in New York on the 39th floor <laughs> in the Upper East Side, living in 50, one room with 15 other boys to the Upper East Side on the 39th floor. That's an American dream, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was a night. I looked across the city skyline, and I burst into tears, just the tears of joy. I wish that every kid from my community could have seen this. Like in a community where there's barely lights during at night, they wouldn't have believed what I was seeing. But I would like to share a story with you today, a video. It says, Francis, we are like brothers. We speak now every day. But the academy, we had a very, very, very strange relationship. We knew we were cut from the same cloth. We completely respected each other, though. But I found it hard to speak to him. Do you know what I mean? When someone is too close, there's almost too much emotional risk in opening up. We were there together the first day of Right to Dream. And we were both in the MLS draft together. Here's a video of Francis. Today, 46 players will begin their professional journey to Major League Soccer. Somebody's going to have a dream made. Francis Atua Hene. Rumored to go as high as number one. This is the guy that could change an organization. Dreams don't just come true, they are born. Sometimes into the most difficult conditions. Even among unrealized dreams. Crippled by reality. Inspired by dreamers who have gone before. Who can give me the example for an output device? Yes, Francis. Monitor. Monitor, clap for him. Henry! Francis? What's your name? Francis! You need to be moving the ball quicker. Stop dribbling, huh? Yes. Yes. Francis! Come! What do you think the most important thing that a striker have to do? Movement. Movement. Yeah, good. Well done. Challenges are a part of life. If you learn to overcome them, you become a better and a stronger person. Every day we should think about our why. What is your why? Your why will always influence your way of doing things. Build it up, make it transformational. Hard work is when you're doing what you know you have to do when no one is watching. Is this a good job? And that is what this place is about. Who will lead and change the world for good? Today, my message is about togetherness. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, then go together.
Francis, Atua Henny, working his magic. Big Ten Freshman of the Year, Francis Atua Henny, Michigan could be a team you don't want to face late in the season. Attacks and scores, Francis Atua Henny with his eighth goal of the season. Making his case to be a starting striker. So accurate with those headers. We needed a big win today to build our confidence up phrase like the number one team in the country. The Big Ten Championship on the line. Number 19 Michigan Wolverines and number nine Maryland Terrapins. Big ball in. The loose ball is in. Oh, Gives Michigan their first Big Ten Championship. What a moment for Francis and two Eddie. With the fourth pick of the 2018 Super Draft, FC Dallas select Francis Atu Aheni. It's been a very long journey to get here today. I owed a great deal to the Right to Dream Academy. They gave me the opportunity to fulfill my dream when I was only 11 years old. And unfortunately, where I come from, only few people have had that chance to realize that dream. that video for the first time, it was like watching my own story. I was born just like him in a house. There was no father. We both came through a lot. And now, we're both rookies in MLS. I'm a Columbus crew, and I'm loving it. Something pretty special happened to me during my debut. In the closing minute of an intense game, a fight broke out against Orlando City. Many would have looked at a fight and expected me, the Ghanaian boy, to jump in it because all my life I've been fighting. But when I looked at it, I thought, this isn't right. This is not why we're here. So I did what first came to my mind. I started balancing the soccer ball on top of my head <laughs> to just entertain the crowd. And now this caught on and it went viral. I went on Twitter and it was just going crazy. A Be Happy Challenge. I've taken the hashtag Be Happy into a movement to try and help others. I have a website and we even sell t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> and any money I raised, I matched to help a project in Ghana. One of the other Right to Dream graduate, Fifi, who also played at Columbus Crew, started his own academy, and after he finished college and playing pro, he helped kids from tough background, just like Right to Dream does. Since my first year in college, I've been doing summer coaching jobs to raise money and send over to Ghana. And I support six kids. And through Be Happy and Fifi Foundation, and I support kids from the orphanage he's next to. I look at the orphans and think of my own childhood. Anything I can do to give them a moment of happiness will make a huge difference. So please, buy my t-shirts. <laughs> All of us here speaking today went to the Maybrook School. And next is Adele, the first girl in Right to Dream and a role model to many, many girls in Ghana. So please, welcome Adela, and thank you for having me. <laughs> 